welcome back to the channel. So today's video, slurry tankers on. You know I mean one thing, so we're putting out some slurry. First slurry of the year is going out. Uh, we're gonna put out, I don't know how many loads, maybe four loads, five loads, if we can. Uh, depends on a couple of things, depends how many loads we can get out on the ground, what the ground conditions is like, if it starts to rain or not. Uh, it's kind of a little bit sunny day at times, but there's dull clouds off in the distance. So I don't really know if the weather's going to stay with us. But yeah, we'll slurry as long as we can. We get some some loads out. The tank that I took a few loads out of about a week and a half ago is back full again. So it's still mixed. So I'm just going to pull whatever loads I can get out of it out of it and it should take the pressure off. Most of the other tanks we're okay with. It's just this one tank that has filled back up. I think a little bit of uh, water has gotten into it from somewhere. It's what the lowest laying tank in the yard and sometimes when the water tables rise very high, water can get into it. And I think that's maybe what has happened it because it has filled up too quick. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is and we have to deal with it and get it out. So. Yeah, looking forward to doing a bit of slurry. It's the first field walk really of the year. Um, I mightn't say that I'm enjoying it if it's very wet, but we'll see now shortly uh, when we get up to the field. So fingers crossed the conditions isn't too bad. All right, so load number one uh, just coming out in the gate. First thing we have to be careful of is uh, there's a bit of a mucky area there to the left and we're just trying to veer out, uh, we're kind of veering to the right as early as we can without hitting the gate post, and uh, we'll come back in then to the left uh, as we pass it. Uh, and that's there from the, the back end of last year. At the end of last year, we were feeding calves outside, r rare calves, and uh, we, we kept we keep them out as long as possible. I think they were out till about, oh, probably out till about the end of the end of november i think or very very early december i think it was around the end of november uh, before they were taken in and uh, it's just a le bit of a, a, a leftover from that uh, there's a wee bit of a mucky area in the field so just have to be careful getting in and out by it try not to go into it uh, that much we can you kind of have to a little bit but uh, stay out of the worst of it if you like um slurry is Overall, it was quite watery, but this is the, this is the first load, and uh, it's a little bit watery at the start, but it kind of thickens up quite a bit, um, just as it gets on round. Now I don't record the whole load here, but uh, when you get on round, it does thicken up quite a bit, and I, I got a little bit worried when I seen that. I thought it was going to be too thick. I was going to have to mix the tank again, but uh, the next load was fine. Then it was it was quite watery. Uh, which I expected it to be because, as I said, the water was getting is getting into it somehow. Um, yeah, so small bit of footage just of a little bit of spreading here. I suppose not really that much to see, and I have a bit of drone footage then that I took as well. So uh, we'll uh, just watch through on this bit of footage, and then you can see the bit of drone footage, and we'll come back after that then and see what else is going on. Surprisingly, this isn't too bad. I actually thought it might be a bit worse. A couple of little wet spots here and there, but overall, the field is travelable. Just about. You wouldn't want any any water really, but you can travel away on it. Uh, now it is. Look, it's it's 
kind of leaving little bits of marks here and there, but nothing that uh, won't cover themselves up. Um, you know, once the grass starts to grow, you'll not even see them. Uh, but yeah, surprised that uh, it's it's really as good as what it is. Um, I'm probably just going to spread four loads all together on this uh, because. The, the other field, uh, I know it will be a little bit wetter. This is definitely the drier field of the three small fields here. And this is definitely the drier field of the tree. So, yeah, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit nervous now we're going into the other field. Plus there's a couple of bits of snaps of hills on it that you're just going to cut them off. So, this will get them, we'll get four loads out. It's dropped, it'll drop the tank probably about two and a half foot, I'd say. So the pressure will be off with it, we can let it fill back up, give it another mix in a, in a couple of weeks, three weeks time, uh, if the weather's a bit better, and put some more out. But this will get the pressure off for now.
All right, so we're just pulled back into the yard, finished uh, that last load, and uh, yeah, done and dusted for now uh, on slurry. Four loads out, pressure's off that tank. It's dropped down about three foot, uh, or very close to it. So that's not too bad of that done. And uh, yeah, no harm done really. A little bit of muck carried out onto the road, which is kind of expected this time of the year. You're going to get some, but a little bit of muck. Uh, so yeah, that's just the way it is. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna hook off the hook off the tanker, off and we get ready to put the the tractor back in the shed because that's all it has to do for today. I don't then have to use the tanker again, so I've bagged it back in where it's been parked all winter, and uh, yeah, it'll uh, it, it can sit here until we need it. Uh, both tankers have been here the whole winter. Uh, the 2,000 gallon, which we still have. Uh, some people are asking me in one of the previous videos if we still had it. Uh, yes, we do still have it. Uh, it owes us nothing. We put a dribble bar on it a couple of years ago, and uh, we got the grant on that at the time. Um, so yeah, we didn't need to. We didn't need to sell it. It, it as I say, it owes us nothing, and it's handy to have a second tanker when you're busy or you're have slurry to do now a good bit away myself and dad can both just go at it and uh, we can we can get a lot of slurry out fairly quickly if we need to so yeah we'll we'll be holding on to the, the other tanker for now uh, the only problem is that the two of them's parked outside which isn't ideal uh, we really do need a shed to, to put them into we need at some stage we're going to have to put up uh, a lump of a shed for you know that you can put some machinery into it that'll hold some hay and we'll probably enclose it that we could also put some grain into it as well so that's something that's going to be on the cards over the next over the next year or two um you know shed that we can put silage trailers into uh, you know the likes of the, the the tankers even the likes of the silage harvester and some of the the sprayer and stuff that's up in the the other shed up the top of the yard we would take them out and just put all the tractors up there or something you know so uh you know the good size shed that would hold the machinery that you could easily put 150 200 round bales of hay into if you wanted to, some square bales uh and you know fill it up there and be able to sell them out over the winter time if you if you needed to uh, and also it what we could do it too is a shed that in in the summertime when we're harvesting the crops that we have somewhere that we can tip that we can tip the barley or wheat or whatever we're harvesting and not have to haul it away you know if you have a deal done to sell it or whatever you're going to do with it sometimes you can be under pressure and the last thing you need is driving away you know half an hour 45 minutes in one direction to tip a load of grain and then to go back to the field and you're gone for an hour and a half and the combine is almost waiting on you by the time you come back because uh, you're not back quick enough so to have somewhere closer to home that you could just tip a few loads or tip you know 30 40 50 ton be able to pull it there in one area and a few days later when the harvest is the harvest and whatever fields whatever you're doing is done that you can load it back up and whether you're busting it here in the yard or putting it in your sheds your own shed seal or you're selling it on or storing it somewhere else that you can the that, that you can do that then at your leisure a few days later so yeah that's it's something a, sh a shed for a few different purposes that's what we need so yeah as i say we'll, we'll have to work on that uh, over the next year or two so uh, we we'll get this hooked off and get the tractor back in the shed and uh, yeah we'll have a little update then what else has been on this week Yeah, there you go. 
and we'll just get the panel fork suit on and just go up and lift it off. Uh, they were connected earlier on. And uh, yeah, we'll just take them off the trailer. And we can put them in the, the shed for the straws. It's just starting to rain now. here and we'll transfer the, the most of these into barrels later <coughs> You know the rain and look at what they are covered in cling film, but oh, that wrap is like cling film. Uh, but it wouldn't be waterproof, and uh, there is some showers of rain forecast for later. Uh, we put the panel forks back down with the well. So bucket is back on the tiny portal. 2850 is out and running and ready for starting to feed. So just have to pull it up into position and we'll start feeding. Uh, it is currently 10 to 5. So we're going to get feeding now shortly and at least uh, we'll have, we'll be finished about half six roughly. It takes about an hour and a half to, to feed everything. So not too bad. Uh, so we we'll get cracking out now shortly. Um, other things that's going on this week, we had a hair test which uh, was on the the cows, uh, the young stock, the last year's Waynelands, and um, two stock bulls. So that had to be done on, first part was on Tuesday, and then they were read off uh, today. And clear test, which is always great. So it's always a little bit of a worry when you have a hair test that, that everything's okay, but yeah, no, no problems at all, which is great. Uh, cows, uh, when we had them out, they got the they got the scale vaccination for the calves, uh, which has to be done. I think it's between three weeks before calving, and up to three months. So, uh, some of them probably will be calving in around three weeks' time, and then they'll be going on for about two months. So, uh, usually every year when the they're out getting the the hair test done, we just give them their shot as the cows as they going up the crush, and then it passes on through them to the calves. So. Yeah, it's just one more thing that's done. Um, yeah, so that's done and dusted. Uh, did a wee bit of cleaning on the cow shed this week. Have we been full of taking on that? Uh, but there's more to be done on that, and that'll be part of next week's video. I thought it might be this week's video, but uh, it'll be part of next week's video. We'll have the by next weekend. I hope to have all ready for the the cows calving, and. Um, I'm also going to do a video on the, the beef cattle and how they are going because a few people on to me asking me to, to make a video on those as well. So that's uh, coming in next week's video too. Uh, didn't get to the spring uh, farm machinery show in Cavan this week. I seen it was on. I think it was only on for two days th this year. Um, or maybe the last couple of years only on two days. It used to be on for three uh, before that. But I haven't been at it now in it could be three or four years. So it's uh, something I must go back to again. Uh, maybe next year, try and make a trip down to it. Um, 
but yeah, it's usually a good show, and uh, I've seen a lot of people uh, putting up different clips of being at it, so that's always good to see. Uh, there was also a tractor uh, demonstration last night that we're uh, all getting together and, and doing a run, uh, just showing a bit of solidarity with uh, some of the stuff that's going on all over Europe and France and Germany. So we've seen some footage of that, there seem to be a lot of tractors out in force for that. Uh, we need to stand up against all these rules and regulations and stuff that's making our job a lot harder than what it should be. It's hard enough as it is without all the red tape and hurdles that's been thrown into our way. Uh, and uh, never mind the fact that we're not getting paid enough for what we do. So, yeah, we we'll watch this space and see what happens. Uh, but, yeah, that's really an update on everything that's going on. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have, don't forget to hit the, the like button. Leave a like on the video. Leave a comment on the video if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to add to it. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Hope to see you in next week's video. Take care. See you then.